Hey guys, welcome back. Well, today we're going to do a special request video, but before we jump in, uh, my apologies for the background noise. We have uh, quite a storm going on right now. Uh, but that said, uh, we're going to do a request video today. We're going to be talking about exploding the mesh, okay? What that means, why you should do that, and what the benefits are. Okay, here we go. Hi hey guys, we're in Maya 2018. Let's talk about exploding meshes, okay? Well, uh, first of all, I'm gonna give you a quick uh, demonstration so you kind of understand what the idea is here, right? So I'm gonna take a uh, polygon plane and I'm just gonna hit R and uh, scale it up like that. And then, uh, I don't know, we'll take a, a polygon cube and we'll just uh, move that on top, all right? Now, what I want you to do right now is use your imagination, okay? Let's say I have a can of spray paint and I'm gonna spray paint this uh, plane right here. I'll just uh, turn off the display, uh, the grid, sorry. I'm gonna spray paint this and I'm gonna leave this cube right there. Well, by the time I'm done, uh, let's say I'm creating a blue paint, right? I'll have a blue plane and I move this thing out of the way and you see a white spot, right? Well, that's kind of the idea what we're talking about here. So whenever you are baking uh, normal maps, diffuse maps, it doesn't really matter, and you have a proximity between two objects like this, then it's not always ideal because you will get artifacts, you will get discoloration, maybe even blank spots, and you won't want that, right? So the process that we're gonna talk about is how do you bake it independently from each other, okay, to avoid that. So what we're gonna do here is just uh, create something really simple. And uh, let's see, I'll uh, take a polygon pipe. I'll hit the control A, we'll go in, we'll set this to eight subdivisions, which is fine. And then we're gonna go in and take a, um, a cylinder. We'll set that to eight as well. And we'll just jump to our top view, F to zoom in, R to scale in, four for wireframe mode, there we go. And then we're gonna hit R to stretch that out. Okay, so this is gonna be our low poly, right? Let's uh, quickly UV this guy. I'm gonna go to uh, modeling. We're gonna go to UV, automatic projection, UV, UV editor. And what we're gonna do is right click, go to UV shell. I'll drag select all of it and go to uh, modify and layout so I can see what's what. And then let's see, we're gonna go in here, we're gonna go to edge, I'm gonna right click, go to um, move and sew, and hit the G to repeat last command. Let's see what's going where. We don't want that, we don't want that. We do want this. Okay, that one's going there, that one's going there. That one is going right there there and that one's going there and then we're going to right click at a UV shell again I'm going to drag select all of it right click modify and layout and it's UV'd okay alrighty so we got this low poly version right now um, the high poly version doesn't have to be UV'd but it's just easy to copy it so I'm just going to control D to copy W move it over okay now in this case, uh, we're not gonna do a normal map, we're gonna do a, a diffuse map, but it's the exact same principle. I'm choosing a diffuse map because it's easier to see, all right? So I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna um, assign a new material. Let's do a Lambert, let's do, I don't know, red. And then we'll take this and we'll assign new material, we'll do something else. Let's do blue, okay? So what we're gonna go for here is we want to bake this color onto our low poly model, right? Now first we need to be able to identify them. So we're gonna go to our outliner and we got this guy selected. I'm gonna hit Control G to group it. I'm gonna uh, double click on it. Let's call this low poly underscore no underscore color. All right, and then we got these two. Control G to group that. Double click, high poly, it's not really high poly, but you know what I mean, right? Underscore, uh, no, underscore, color. Let's make sure it looks identical. Yeah, there we go. All right, so that's what we got. We got our no color, and actually, of course, this one has color. I'm so sorry. 
Oh, shoot. <clears throat> all righty, so that's what we got, all right? Now, uh, this guy, uh, we're going to go to edit, delete by type history. We're going to go to modify freeze transformation, and we're going to go to modify and center pivot. Here, we're going to go to uh, edit, delete by type and history. We're going to go to modify and center pivot. However, it needs to be in the same position. So we're going to jump to our top view. We're going to hold down W, uh, sorry, we're going to hold down X to snap it, and then we're going to snap it in the same position. And now we're going to go to modify and free transformation. All right. So now that we have that, we've got these two at the same position. I'm going to close my outliner. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually I'll open it so we can see what's going on. So we can see our high poly and our low poly right there. OK, and we're going to set this back to zero and we're ready to bake. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to uh, rendering and we're going to go to lighting shading transfer maps now what do we want we want a diffuse map that's what we're going to select we need to uh, select our target mesh so where is the information going to go to um, let's just uh, clear everything here looks like we've got some stuff going on here and we don't want that there we go okay so target our, uh, my low poly is the target that's where I want my information to go to okay so I'm gonna add selected my high poly is my source Add selected now here you can select an envelope if you will right there and then if you set this to a certain value let's do 2.2 maybe and 2.2 uh, here as well what you see is that you now have an envelope uh, around the object. So that's kind of uh, being used as a cage for projection. Okay. So let's uh, scrub down here. I'm okay with that. Well, let's see. Good, good, good. And then we're going to go to output maps. I got, uh, I'll turn off normal. I'll just do the diffuse here. I'm going to click on where I want to save it. Let's go to our desktop and let's do uh, color big non exploded as a JPEG. All right. So let's see JPEG. All right, all right, all right, all right. And I think we're all good. So we're going to just hit bake. And that shouldn't take too long. And then I'll open it up for comparison later. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back in and we're going to explode the mesh. Okay. So we're going to select our low poly. And what I'll do to make things easier is I'll select high poly and hit H just to hide it. So we've got our low poly, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this part of it, just that part. I got my animation slider. I'm on the slide uh, frame one. And I'm going to hit S to keyframe that. Okay. Then I'm going to scrub to frame five. And I'm going to move this out of the way to, let's say, four. Hit enter. And then I'm going to right click and go to set key. And as I do that, you see that a key has been set on five. So I can go up and down like that. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in to uh, display and show all. So my high poly is visible. I'm going to select the low poly, hit H to hide that one. I'm going to select this guy on my high poly. Make sure I'm in frame one once again, hit S. To keyframe it, scrub to five, pull this over, set this to four, hit enter, and then we're going to right click and set key. So here we have the same situation. All right. So now we're going to make everything visible again. So show all. There you go. And let's see what happens. So if I scrub this to five, and uh, I'll just show you that they're both there. Okay, what we'll do is um, I will take my uh, low poly and yeah, there you go. You can already see it. Okay, there you go. So what we're going to do now is instead of leaving things at frame one, we're going to scrub to frame five and we're going to bake from that position. Okay, so we're going to go to rendering.
and I'll call this, uh, let's see, can't find the one that I did just now, but we'll call it um, big color with explode as a JPEG and save. And we'll go in and we'll hit bake. All right, now let's open these two up and I'll show you the difference, here we go. All right, guys, well, right in the Photoshop, as you can see, I loaded up the two different bakes, the non-exploded mesh uh, bake and the exploded mesh bake. And uh, let's uh, go through the differences, okay? So first of all, what's what? If you remember, we had a, a vertical uh, pipe in uh, a cylinder inside a, a pipe. Now, this right here, that is the top of the vertical. This is the bottom of the vertical. And this right here is um, the, uh, the surroundings of the vertical, okay? And then everything else, let's call this the, the nut, right? This is the top, the bottom, the inside, and the outside, okay? Now, uh, first of all, the inside of the nut here without the explode is completely red, which is uh, incorrect. That should be blue, right? And then you see that the inside here is red as well. That is all artifacting and noise. Now, by exploding the mesh, you have a much, much cleaner uh, bake. That's basically all there's to it, okay? So hopefully uh, this was uh, understandable. I know it's kind of tricky to explain. I did my best, uh, but hopefully you understand it. If you've got any questions, let me know. And that said, thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future videos. And see you guys next time. Bye. Well, thanks for watching. And before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.